Hello, guys and gals, me Mudahar. And you know, every day that you wake up, I want you to just feel, you know, I want you to take a breath before we start this video, okay? I want you to just <laughs> breathe in, exhale out real quick because you managed to survive today, okay? You're alive, all right? You, your eyes awoke, you're conscious, the world's good outside, and we're not sitting in a fiery pit of death. <laughs> now, of course, ladies and gentlemen, the reason I say this is because you know, as always, I like reading crazy shit on the internet, and I always like reading fearful stuff, okay? I love that fear-mongering. Give me some of that fear, okay? Scare me, news. Apparently, there's an asteroid that's going to hit us in 2032. Woo! Well, at least I can proudly say we'll be playing GTA 6 before that drops, all right? God, if this was next week... <laughs> With like a 100% guarantee, I'd probably cry. But there's a surprisingly 2.3% chance of hitting us. Now, I saw this floating around, and immediately it reminded me of the funniest stuff that if you watched my channel like two years ago, you probably noticed that I covered a lot of these stupid like articles that constantly show up every near day. Like, I shit you not, back in 2022, a site like Forbes, for instance, would be like, asteroid the size of a grand piano strikes Earth and we knew exactly where and when, says NASA. So when you read stuff like that and you think, whoa, whoa, whoa I think the barrier of entry <laughs> for Forbes <laughs> might not be as high as I think. Oh, uh, here's another one, guys. Crazy shit. Global news. Grand piano sized ast... <laughs> Who the fuck is calculating the size of extraterrestrial rocks <laughs> in fucking objects? You know, it's funny how they say the size of a grand piano, like we should be freaking out. When the grand... Dude, an asteroid the size of a grand piano is burning up in orbit, okay? Played enough space games to know that. Honestly, you could have been fresh out of your mom's womb and knew that right there, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I love this one. An asteroid the size of two football pitches will make its closest to pro What is a football pitch, Forbes? I want to ask, what is a football pitch? What is that level of fucking measurement? But of course, obviously, there's some cool stuff. Like, apparently, there is the God of Chaos asteroid. Now, this is 99942 Apophis. And I talked about this two years ago. Like, this is one of the most tracked asteroids. I would love to, honestly speaking here, I would love to die by something called the God of Chaos. Like, that shit just sounds fucking amazing. But if you go to, like, NASA.gov, a real actual government website, by the way, this is actually where your tax money goes to at some point. Here's the next five asteroid approaches. And to, to no joke, all right, if you start looking at them, one of these, is, like, they'll give you, like, the next five. So here you've got one that's actually car size. So, yes, we are calculating this with size of cars. So if you look at the appro approximate size in meters, like a good metric boy should, five meters, okay? Five meter asteroid is coming at us. And the uh, closest approach in kilometers, like a good metric boy, 314,000 kilometers from Earth, okay? So, you know, relatively far, but when it comes to space, not far enough. And of course, that'll come by February 7, 2025. In fact, that is literally Literally now, okay? All right, so if you survived a car-sized asteroid, you're fine. But, you know, something that could be a little scarier is an airplane-sized asteroid. <laughs> you know, with all the airplanes going down, you know, as fucked up as it is, I would not want anything to get too close. And thankfully, it's 3.5 million miles from Earth, okay? So you don't have to worry too much about it. If you worry about a house-sized asteroid hitting us, yeah, well, luckily it's 1.3 million miles away. But that could be, you know, if, if everything aligns properly, could be close to Earth. Now, obviously, this is something that NASA does so that people can have something fun to look at in the stars. But there are genuine fears of asteroids hitting us, okay? So from the friends over at the European Space Agency, NASA in the European side... We weren't just waiting for an asteroid to strike. We're taking active measures to help Earth defend itself against a potential impact. So they have this near-Earth object coordination center that monitors 37,000 near-Earth asteroids. The vast majority are effectively entirely safe, but occasionally one may pose a potential hazard. So yeah, this is actually not a joke. Like sometimes when you have the size of certain asteroids, remember, 
We used to have dinosaurs on this planet. You know, they just walked around and shit. Like, it used to kind of be Ark Survival Evolved for a while. Until, of course, you know, a giant asteroid basically hit the entire Earth. For those of you who don't know, this is the Chizulub asteroid. 25,450 kilometers squared was the affected area of apparently its hit. And you can actually look at the actual crater. Apparently the size of this actual asteroid was rel was actually larger than Mount Everest, okay? So anytime Forbes scares you about, like, grand pianos and fucking football, like, you know, uh, pitches, remember, okay, Mount Everest-sized asteroid, if that hits Earth, we're basically dead, okay? We're actually beyond dead. We're so fucking over at that point. Like, apparently the actual asteroid that killed the dinosaurs had as much explosive energy as 100 teratons of TNT, okay? Again, I, I just wanna remind you, okay? If this hits you, you know, there's, there's almost nothing you can do. Like, if you feel existential and scared about an asteroid hitting you, if something like that comes towards Earth and we can't move it, again, you just have to learn to just look at it with a smile, maybe preferably be under the asteroid, so you just get incinerated quickly. And, you know, just realize that, honestly, there's really nothing you can do. Remember, we're in space, okay? Every day you wake up and a massive asteroid like that hasn't hit Earth is a lucky day that you get to live and spend with your family and your friends. <laughs> that's pretty much, that's how I tend to cope with some of this stuff. I really feel like, you know, once you, once you start reading up more about this shit, there's two paths you can take. One of them is where you're actually dreading every single day of your life because you're worried something fucked up is going to happen or you just get to the acceptance that you're literally nothing but an ant in the grand scheme of things, if that. And one day, all things can come to an end. So just enjoy your life and have a good time while you can, okay? Drink in good health, have fun in good health, and be a good person. That's all you can do. But yeah, to go over here, the, the actual crater was apparently this section off of Merida, okay, in the Yucatan Peninsula in good old Mexico. Uh, well, is that the Gulf of America now? I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, this whole area, yeah, there was a, there was some bad things that happened over here, and it's because of this impact that the world's dinosaur population effectively just crapped itself. Because that's what's going to happen when something like this hits us. It's like Chrono Trigger, you know, when Lavos is hitting you, this just happens. So, again, to go back to, you know, what the asteroid currently is, the 2% chance, According to, <laughs> according to Forbes, I'm not joking with you, odds of Disneyland's... <laughs> Bro, these guys are just memeing. They're memeing. At least Yahoo's like 2024 YR4, which is the name of the asteroid, city killer asteroid headed for Earth. And then when you go to Forbes, they're such assholes that they change it to like, you can't read it well because they got this paywall. Odds of football side field sized asteroid. They just keep changing it. Bro, stop it. This is not a joke. You're talking about an actual world killer here. Now, obviously, this is like the asteroid seen with discovery images just flying through space, okay? All right, just, just minding its own business looking for something to kill. So basically, this is like 130 to 300 feet wide and has a very small chance of hitting Earth. Now, obviously, that 1% impact probability jumped up to 2%. Uh, and of course, it's going to happen in 2032. So obviously, we've got some time to, to really think about what we want to do. But obviously, the size over here, and I'm glad we talked about the dinosaur killer asteroid, because this one is nowhere near the size of something like that. If honestly, that was headed towards us on an actual crash course, I probably wouldn't be laughing and giggling as much. But this is something that has allowed, you know, at least the governments of the world to somewhat respond to this. Now, while it's pretty easy for humanity to constantly destroy its, like, environment and world all around it, at least there are agencies like the ESA and NASA that somewhat come together to, like, simulate programs to help us basically avoid getting hit by actual space rocks. Now, one of those programs is DART, okay? And for anybody that doesn't know what DART is, DART is a program where apparently, I guess, the, the it's a... Asteroid redirection test, okay? And so what they do is apparently sending something into space, having it effectively collide with an asteroid and making it change its orbit enough so that it doesn't attack Earth or anything is basically the intended goal, all right? So not exactly something super cool like sending a fucking nuclear weapon to space and blowing it, but just literally, you know, shooting at something in the sky and making it change course. That's basically the crux of it. Now, since I covered this last time, thankfully, NASA actually did confirm that their mission and program was a success. 
Meaning that, you know, at this moment in time, ladies and gentlemen, if we're worried about something, we do have the ability to at least hit an asteroid and move its entire like location, according to all the simulations and everything in practice. So if you are genuinely worried, uh, well, I don't think you really should be. According to NASA, it's a watershed moment for planetary defense and all of humanity, demonstrating the commitment from NASA's team. So basically what they did was it took Dimorphos 11 hours and 55 minutes to orbit its larger parent asteroid, Didymos, since DART's intentional collision with Dimorphos on September 26th, astronomers have been using telescopes on Earth to measure how much that time has changed. Now the team confirmed that spacecraft's impact altered the orbit around Didymos by 32 minutes, shortening the 11 hour and 55 minute orbit to 11 hours and 23 minutes. Again, if this doesn't feel massive to you, it's actually really a huge moment of change. It is really huge for things like planetary defense. Like literally before this kind of stuff, it was literally just, hey, look up at the sky and pray to God that the fucking giant moon from Majora's Mass doesn't actually impact you. Uh, and so again, you know, this is just stuff we kind of work up to. And I kind of do suspect that it's not just NASA or even the ESA. I'm sure that, you know, companies like SpaceX, uh, I think it's like Blue Origin is like Jeff Bezos. And I think it's like Virgin Galactic, which is like, um, there's another billionaire. It's like space is huge for like some of the world's biggest billionaires. And I'm sure they're also involved in projects that are helping to assist with just planetary defense. Because remember, you know, forget about space exploration. If we can't handle the basic act of protecting ourselves, we're fucked. And remember for now, it's kind of scary because earth is the only colony humans have, all right? We're not a space faring like race yet. So you gotta be just a little bit mindful and very worrisome about that for now. But yeah, seriously, this kind of stuff interests you. NASA has like a whole web-based 3D simulation that goes amongst not just Apophis, but you got Ryugu, Bennu, Didymos right over here as we just saw, Ida Sykes. So you got like all these different like asteroids which you can look, I'll calculate their path. And again, if you ever wanna go through an existential crisis, this 3D <laughs> like image is totally available for you to witness right now. Like here's like the dart asteroid impact. So this is like what the impact actually looked like from the ground. Uh, so that ladies and gentlemen, if we're looking at it real carefully is the, like at that point, the actual impact occurred right around when you see this like big cloud occurring. So I guess at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, should you be necessarily worried about a giant ass asteroid basically nuking you and killing you? I think the chances of that are always there. But like I said, generally speaking, we are nothing but a tiny piss in a massive ocean in the world. Like that's how small we really are. So at the end of all of it, if Earth gets hit by a massive asteroid, uh, there's really nothing you or I can do about it other than just laugh and talk and have a good time. So at the end of all this, you know, people who get fear mongered by, you know, pages like this, remember, okay, there's, there's really nothing you can do. So just live a good life, be nice to people around you, and that's really all you can do. But if you want to make yourself feel a little bit better and not without any platitude, there are again agencies that have actually successfully done space programs like DART where they actually have real data. So if something does impact us or something is on a crash course, we thankfully now do have some level of planetary defenses against it. So if that makes you feel better, big thumbs up right there. <laughs> but yeah. Wild stuff, ladies and gentlemen. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Just like it if you dislike it. I am out.